Seriously, enough with the same question day in, day out. Orion, why do I find you so attractive? I, I've never heard that in my life. I cry myself to sleep. On this video, I'm gonna answer the question you may well have asked yourself. It's not an uncommon question. Why are so many neurotypical people, non-autistic people, attracted to autistic people? I'm gonna go through the autistic traits and qualities that some neurotypical people find irresistible. Oh, hey, I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy, which is probably why you find me so irresistible, <laughs> right? No. Anyway, since my adult diagnosis, I've devoted my time to advocating for the autistic community. Now, I do that in many ways. Well, I guess a few at least. <laughs> my blogs, podcasts, and these YouTube videos. So... If you'd like to help me raise a level of understanding, appreciation, and acceptance of the autistic community, I'd be delighted if you'd consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Just by clicking that subscribe button and ringing the notifications bell, not only will you never miss another video, but also, and this is a, a priceless way of supporting me, and it doesn't cost you a cent, by subscribing, you help me reach even more people which increases the level of understanding and acceptance of autistic people. And thank you so much to the people that have taken the time already to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Much love. Fist is the wrong thing to do. You can also check me out and say hey on the socials. Find me on Facebook. Yeah, I would appreciate it if you would follow the Orion Kelly page on Facebook. You can also check me out on all the other social platforms. Not all of them. I mean, I have got a life. <laughs> no friends, but a life. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and my videos, the shorter version videos, obviously, on TikTok. So check me out, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And one-stop shop where I don't sell anything, everything I do in the one place, go to the website, oriankelly.com.au. Check out everything that I create. Plus, you can read about me and reach out and send me a message, orionkelly.com.au. All right, let's get started going through some of the more common autistic traits or qualities that some neurotypical people, some non-autistic people find attractive, irresistible. And it goes without saying, but I'll point it out again, I'm an autistic guy, okay? He, him, I'm autistic. I can only share my own personal experiences and I can only speak through the lens of an autistic male. So. I'll do my best to broaden out the traits and qualities to make them, I guess, not gender specific. I'll do my best, but I can only really speak on my own personal experiences. So let's get started. The first autistic trait, quality, that neurotypical people find so attractive is the fact that, well, we're basically feminists. Now, hear me out, okay. So when I say that, what I mean is autistic people are members of a minority. We are members of a disabled minority. As an autistic person, we spend our life fighting for equality, understanding, and acceptance. And in my opinion, feminism, or being a feminist, is in respect the idea that you believe regardless of what minority you may be a part of, you're entitled to the same levels of equality and understanding and acceptance and opportunities as any other person. So. I know that seems like a broader way of looking at feminism, but from my point of view, it's intrinsic to an autistic person's personality. And building on that, I can tell you that I've never grown up understanding gender roles. So I don't, I've never had an understanding or a, an idea, a preconceived notion that because I'm a guy, I must go get a full-time job and my wife well, she'll stay at home and do women things. I don't even, that doesn't occur to me. It makes no sense to me. So as an autistic person, we tend to not follow cultural, societal, or gender-based limitations and norms and rules. And because of that, it clearly doesn't occur to us that we have to in some way fit to a predetermined mold placed on us by society, a gender-based mold or a, 
a mold that says you can only be this or that based on your own limitations or what member of the minority you're part of or whatever aspects of your personality or your own personal background, you know, put you in a mold society says you must fit into. I'm married with two kids and I'm the guy at home. My wife works full time. She has a successful career. So I guess this idea of coming from a minority, having this kind of feminist view on the world is an attractive quality for some neurotypical people. The next autistic trait or quality that neurotypical people find attractive, and I'm using this through my own personal lens, is that I'm personally not a macho man. <laughs> I'm not a blokey bloke. And broadening it out, I guess you could say, autistic people aren't necessarily the stereotype that they should be. A gender stereotype or even a cultural stereotype of you know, what an Aussie bloke should be, right? Me being Australian, an Aussie bloke is very different to who I am. I'm not a macho man or an Aussie bloke. I don't like hanging out with my mates at the pub or I don't know, fishing or sports sporting things. I like sport, but it's not a thing where I'm like, hey, catch you later. I'll see you in about 12 hours. I'm going out to the pub to watch the sport with the mates. Well said. Well said. I don't have a man cave. <laughs> How good are these things? Where neurotypical men use their man cave to, in effect, hide away from slash ignore their partner and children so they can watch TV and drink beer with their mates. <laughs> that's not a man cave, that's single life. That's being single. If you wanna live the lifestyle a man cave affords you, I recommend divorce and complete abandonment of all your children. <laughs> I mean, you've done it already, just not officially. I'm not in any way weak. I can't be intimidated or bullied or pushed around, but in saying that, I'm not a blokey bloke. I come across very different to stereotypical men that we expect to see because society says, this is how you must act as a man. I like the same things my wife likes. I'm a hands-on dad. That's, to me, that's just the way it is or should be. The, the options don't even seem relevant to me. What, what options are there? You got married and had kids, okay. Do family stuff. So I guess that's one of the reasons why I can come across very different to stereotypical men. And certainly when you're meeting people, when you're dating, you absolutely will stand out like someone very different. Now this one's a little bit controversial, a little bit icky, a little bit awkward and uncomfortable, but it is a potential autistic trait or quality that neurotypical people find attractive about autistic people. And that is, that the autistic person reminds them in some way of a parent of theirs. I know, uh, hear me out. To break it down, what I'm saying is the neurotypical person realizes there are similarities in personality or traits between one of their parents and the autistic person they're attracted to. Now, this is a very, when you think about it, it's a very interesting topic. I'm not gonna psychoanalyze it, but okay, so there's a thing about how you, you marry your, your parent, like something that reminds you, right? Okay, cool, but from this point of view, what it actually could say is as a neurotypical person, there's a chance that one of your parents may not only have similar traits, but may actually be an undiagnosed autistic person. And then that lends an ear to, hmm, wonder about me. <laughs> This is where it's a really interesting trait, but it's not uncommon, I promise you, certainly for neurotypical women, falling for an autistic guy who has similar traits to their dad, for example. The next autistic trait or qualities that neurotypical people can find attractive in autistic people is in fact the autistic person's emotional qualities. Now this is clearly breaking all the myths breaking down the misconceptions, but it isn't uncommon for neurotypical people to find the autistic person they're attracted to, to be, to some degree, maybe significantly more caring, more kind, more attentive, more warm, more compassionate than neurotypical people they've dated in the past. It's not uncommon for neurotypical people to also find autistic people more romantic 
or more open to those kind of romantic gestures than neurotypical people have dated in the past as well. And one of the other emotional qualities that neurotypical people can find attractive is this social immaturity and this emotional openness held by autistic people. You know, sometimes the actual initial attraction point for a neurotypical person comes from being around the autistic person who seems to have no filter or no fear of telling the truth or seems to have social awkwardness. Yeah, obviously, we know it's social challenges. It's a developmental neurological disability. So they, they see these things, but it's endearing to them. As a result, autistic people can seem, not always, but can seem more interesting, more mysterious, more playful, more caring than potentially neurotypical people you've dated in the past. Another autistic trait that some neurotypicals find irresistible are the moral qualities of an autistic person. An autistic person can often be more open, more honest, more reliable, more dependable. And from a dating point of view, this means there is pretty much no, I mean, little to no game playing, little to no mind games. It's just a pure dating relationship, minus all the weird mind games and silly power plays. Autistic people can also be fully committed to a relationship or dating. They can be fully vulnerable and open. A part of that moral quality as well is autistic people have a strong sense of right and wrong. Neurotypical people, sometimes, not always, can find that really attractive. Someone who knows right from wrong and is not afraid to stand up for it. I guess another way to put it is a strong sense of social justice. There are a lot of neurotypical people that find that very attractive, but it's hard potentially to meet other people who share that strong sense of social justice. I can tell you from my own experience as an autistic person, I'm absolutely openly truthful about all my thoughts and feelings. And it's not, I don't time it. It's not the right time. I don't censor it. It's just, there it is. In saying that though, from my experience, dates can go real bad. When you have this level of emotional and moral qualities that are right there on the edge, yeah, dates can go real bad. I guess probably in dates gone by, I probably shouldn't have talked about the potential of marriage, five minutes into the first date, maybe. Okay, I made a mistake, I apologize. Whatever, what are you an expert? What are you watching this then? So with the emotional and moral qualities in mind, the next autistic trait that I think neurotypical people can find really attractive in autistic people is the personality traits that we have which aren't necessarily held by non-autistic people. Like I said, we speak our mind. We call out wrongdoings. We can provide brutally honest answers and advice to really any person in any circumstance at any time. And frankly, I can tell you, it never really occurs to me how standing up for what's right or simply telling the truth can actually be the wrong thing to do or offensive. That seems bizarre to me. It, it's illogical. How is it inappropriate to be honest? When asked the question, how is it inappropriate to stand up for what's right and what's wrong? I'm told it is every day, every moment. I've got to run almost everything by people. Is, is, is it okay if I, no, don't do that. Okay, why? Oh, they'd be offended or it's inappropriate. Okay, it's inappropriate and offensive. Me telling them the truth. You know what, forget it. I think at the core of this though, this full openness, this full honesty, telling it how it is, I think some neurotypicals can find this really attractive, can find it admirable, endearing, empowering. Well, at least initially, <laughs> that's the disclaimer. It might get the attraction, but good luck. 10 years into your marriage. <laughs> what do you think about this? And also as part of the personality traits, I think the intellect or at least the way of thinking and viewing the world through an autistic lens is also really attractive to some neurotypical people because it's refreshing, it's different. And I guess the last part of the personality qualities is career goals or life ambitions. These kind of goals and ambitions and drive can be really also refreshing and exciting to neurotypical people who may be used to dating people, neurotypical people who might come across a bit lazy or not really filled with any goals or aspirations. They're just kind of like, Rolling with it. I may have saved the best for last. This is ooh, potentially controversial, potentially, well, I don't know. Is it open to attack? I'm not sure. Let's just go with it, okay? The, 
The final autistic trait or quality that I think neurotypicals find attractive in autistic people is our lack of experience. Okay, let me explain. Our lack of dating experience, our lack of relationship experience, our lack of sexual experience. These, I think, can be attractive to neurotypical people. Okay, number one, we have little to no experience in the dating game. But that also means we have little to no baggage. How attractive is someone without baggage? And I guess I can only speak on my own experience. We've talked about it in other videos on sexuality. I class myself as demisexual, meaning I need a strong emotional bond for a sexual attraction. As a result, I'm not what you would class, or autistic people may not be what neurotypical people would class as players. Autistic people don't come across like player. We don't rush into things. We don't push people into things. We take our time with emotional and physical bonds and relationships. So don't discount the lack of experience as a very attractive quality for an autistic person. Little baggage, a freshness, open eyes, not a player. Willing to take it as it comes. Probably should have reworded that. So I hope we got to the bottom of some of the autistic traits and qualities that neurotypical people find irresistible. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I'd appreciate it if you consider clicking that subscribe button. And until my next video, thanks again for watching and we'll talk soon.